Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to episode 39. One short of 40. Of the Calypso Cigar Review Podcast. As always, from the lovely Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. And you're getting to see a different angle of it today? Yep. Today we got some posters. Fancy. We got the acid poster back there. We got the Willie and Willie. Willie no, and Kinky. Willie and Kinky. Kinky Willie. Yeah. And the uh, chick on the cigar. Hot babes. The Hot cigar babes. Chick on the stick. The chick on the stick. Yep. I like chicks on a stick. Yep, me too. Who yep. doesn't? And uh, today we are reviewing a new cigar here at the Clipso uh, Cigar Shop and Lounge. It's not currently out, but by the time this airs, it should be out. It is the Romeo in it's Romeo and Julieta R-Y-J. R-Y-J. This so is, tell us a little bit about this. This is the first Nicaraguan Romeo and Juliet ever made. Usually they're Dominican. and Or Cuban. And this has got Nicaraguan Corojo from Jalapa. Ooh, Jalapa. And as uh, it's the wrapper, the binder is Nicaraguan Jalapa and Esteli. Okay. And the and it's a double binder. The vintage 2010 aged fillers are Nicaraguan Jalapa, Nicaraguan Esteli, mm-hmm. and Nicaraguan La Mia. I don't know what that is. I don't but... know what that is. But uh, I have had this. This is Brandon's first time. And uh, the one I had was wet, so I dry boxed it for about a week. All right. And so let's see how it goes. Cold draw it... was pretty good open. Yep, the foot smell, the foot smell, that sounds weird. <laughs> the smell on the foot is really spicy. Mm-hmm. Me likey. So let's see what it's uh, cold draw is like on this sucker. This is a pretty good size. What size is this? It's their Toro. It's 6 by 52, but it feels bigger than a 52. That's what she said. Uh, it's cold draw is uh, tobacco-y, a little spicy. And the dry boxing has helped. Yep. It was really, they were really moist. They're new. They're trying to get them out, you know. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll do that away from the microphone there. Using my Zakar Lada. And we're pairing today our buddy Davis, who's been a frequent guest on the show. And as you all know, he's a beer nut. Uh, got a job at a local brewery, so we're congratulating Davis. And in honor, we're smoking a beer. Smoking a beer? We're drinking a beer from his new job. It's called Hot. Revolver Blood and Honey American Ale. So we'll see how this pairs with this RYJ. Hmm. Get a lot of pie, uh, pepper. Yeah, it's mostly leathery. Not a lot of spice. I've got some. Yet. I've got some pepper. For me. Trying to get it going. I see that's producing a lot of smoke. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, Let me give a try on the uh, the brew here. Yeah. Revolver, blood and honey. so. Congratulations to Davis again. Yep. Good job, Davis. Get us free beer. Mm. All right. It's a weedy, definitely a weedy beer. So one away from forty. Mm-hmm. This is cool. It just seems like we just keep setting milestones, achieving and accomplishing milestones. Well, that's what you do when you Cause we're awesome. work with numbers. We're awesome. That makes it happen. Yep. So this is a um, this is general. Cigar? Altidus. 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 Okay. Altidus. Altidus. And uh, I have some interesting RYJ facts. Not RYJ the cigar. RYJ the company. You know Romeo. Romeo y Julieta. Says ninety three percent of adult premium cigar smokers know the brand Romeo y Julieta. Yeah, I would believe that. Yeah. Eighty eight percent of those same people believe. RYJ is an appealing brand they are willing to try. This is some kind of silly stuff here. What's the, let me look and see if something this better. This is marketing materials. So. Yeah. RYJ capitalizes on the growing demand for the... Okay, now this is talking about the RYJ cigar. It is capitalizing on the growing demand for Nicaraguan cigars. And it's not just another Nicaraguan. The new RYJ is made of 100% Nicaraguan tobacco, so it's a pure, boasting a wrapper grown... Uh, a wrapper... What's... That, that's bad writing on this. Boasting a wrapper grown exclusively for Altidus, four years in development. And Eddie, as Eddie Gavito, as you've all remember from the Altidus event, told me that uh, it is completely proprietary. Nobody can will ever have that wrapper. Cool. It'll only be on the cigar. That's neat. I got a little, little spice on the lips. It's got a little tingle. A little bit, yeah. Tastes like a Nicaraguan. one. Mm-hmm. Does sure. not taste like a RYJ, that's for sure. Oh. No, I mean, you usually, you know, you're talking what, they're normally Dominican? They are. 
Yeah. They're Dominican. So, uh, uh, and the Reserva Real is the most popular. That's the Connecticut. It's uh, mild, creamy, moderately priced. Uh, but they used to call it Habana Reserve, but then Cuba got mad at them. So ah. now it's just called the Romeo y Julieta Reserve. That's a spicy little cigar. It's nothing like this. It just has a lot of taste to it. Uh, but all in all, you know, we, we're more boutique guys, but uh, I'll give people like, we give all to this credit. They're trying to change their image a little bit and try to compete more with the boutiques, which is kind of ironic that they would be trying to compete with boutiques. Well, that's what you got to do to yeah. be relevant in the market, I think, is mm-hmm. compete with what the other guys are doing mm-hmm. if you're not already doing it. Exactly. So what have you been doing lately, Brandon? Working my butt off, man. How yeah. about yourself? Same. <clears throat> Same. And then we had Halloween. That was fun. So Yeah, how'd that go? Halloween. We had like four different Halloweens. It was the, the, the ho- she had the dress up for school. Right. And both of them actually got the dress up for school. But the way the schools do it now, they don't call it Halloween. They call it, you know, fall festival fall or festival. whatever. Because God forbid you call something Halloween and those religious people go, Mer the devil. And then... um. So well, then, then we, it gets reversed at Christmas time because then it's the winter holiday. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, why can't you say Christmas? It's like, well, yeah. why can't you say Halloween? So, fuck you, people. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we had the, the you know, they really got the dress up there. And then we had, you know, the actual Halloween. Mm-hmm. And then we had uh, a party to go to. Um, I think it was the day before Halloween. And then we had one after as mm-hmm. well. So, yeah, it was like four different Halloweens, which is great, great for the kids because they got a crap ton of candy. So That's cool. That and you let them keep their candy? Or you... I am. Um, we go through it and we, you know, get rid of the stuff that looks suspect and, mm-hmm. you know, eh, you know, they keep some of it. We just use it as incentive for other things, but they don't get to keep it all. Bribes, basically? Yeah, bribes, basically. Okay. Yeah. And then I take yeah. a bunch of it to work and let the vultures there My have it. My so. parents took the good shit. They'd go through, oh, there's a Butterfinger. There's a Three Musketeers. Oh, there's this. Oh, here's candy corn. You can have that. <laughs> you know, I, like, I don't take all the good shit, but I take some of the good shit. Now, we went to a real rich neighborhood, and uh, they were giving out Always full-size, a good place to go. full-size candy all bars. Right. So I was like, fuck yeah, Snickers, baby. <laughs> Twix. Awesome. You know, but uh, yeah, so that was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good times, man. Uh, I love I love Halloween. I just wish, you know, I miss the old days when I could actually partake and, yeah. you know, go. And, uh, there's that there's that pre, there's a couple times in your life that Halloween is really awesome. Mm-hmm. And there, there's when you're a kid, when it's, you know, fucking awesome, you get to dress yeah, up as a superhero yeah. or whatever you want right. to do. Yeah. You get to go have fun with your friends. And there's a time when uh, you're a teenager and you get to go out with your friends and have a good time, but you get to drink and you're not supposed to. Right. And then there's a time when you're an adult and you get to go out with your friends and have a good time and get laid and drink a bunch. Mm-hmm. And girls dress like sluts. And then there's a time when you're an adult and you get to see your kids do it. And it's like... And realize that in a couple of years they're going to be at the parties getting late. And that's yeah, not what you want to do. that's bad news. But no. it's it's fun to see the kids do it. But then you're like, I don't get to go out and have fun anymore. So that's kind of... <laughs> you know, you got to get over the selfish you side gotta, of things. And yeah, you remember, it's about the kids. Right. So. But it's not I'm the way... i tired of things being about the kids. It's not the way it used to be, though, man. Halloween used to be badass. It used mm-hmm. to be so... you know Everybody would participate and neighborhoods would open up and just people would... you know candy like waterfalls just coming at you and it would be ridiculous you'd have you know you'd have to go back home and dump mm-hmm. your candy come back out and get more and nowadays it's like so many houses don't even participate it's just one house it's on our street had their light on that's one horrible house. that's horrible and get this we're right across the street from a kindergarten so you know there are a lot of kids in the area but our street was just like no. yeah and you know what they do now is they they do a bunch of events like the, mm-hmm. the city will do like a go to the firehouse mm-hmm. and they'll give you candy or go to these the shopping center and there'll be candy there and i guess parents think it's safer so they take their kids to that so then when actual halloween comes it's like eh, they don't really do anything they have a couple of trick-or-treaters and that's it and, yeah but you know that you know the, the whole thing i think that a big part of that the parents being scared about you know bad things happening on Halloween mm-hmm. isn't really that bad things are happening on Halloween. It's just that we know more about it because of the right. media, mm-hmm. because media is so everywhere and so part of every little nugget of your life. I mean, yep. you can't go to the bathroom without reading the news on your fucking phone nowadays. So, you know, I mean, it's it's every every single little fabric of your life is just soaked in media Mm -hmm. and because of that and because of the media scare tactics parents just freak out and say oh we can't do we can't do like halloween like it used to but you know when i was a kid people got kidnapped and killed and murdered you just didn't hear about it so and the razor blade and the candy yeah all that stuff stuff. it was you know fuck it i think it was our era that where that all started yeah when the rumors of or the stories rumors whatever uh of poison candy and Candy apples, and, candy yeah. apples with razor blades in them and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. I love that shit, man. I love getting razor blades in my apple. <laughs> it's when I knew I was alive. It's like, yeah. ah! Dad's like, don't worry, I'll get it. Okay, go get some more candy. That was life. Yeah, I never got a razor blade, but 
I never did either. That's how we it would be. That's that was... how it would have been in the seventies if it happened. You just take yep. the razor blade out and you go get more candy. Just like, hey, you just you know you get your daddy gets like a hot candy apples anyway. So he gets hot coal. You, ah, and then you go back out and you go get some more candy because we were tough then. Fucking yeah, we uh, pussy kids nowadays. We they're pussies. My grandmother's neighborhood uh, always took part, and my grandmother's she had fun doing it. This is my maternal, no paternal grand grandmother. My dad's mom, and uh, so we'd go to her neighborhood because they would start early because they were old. So yeah, they would start up. So like we could start like, start about five, five fifteen, five yeah. thirty, and then hit that area, and then go over to my where my aunt lived because she lived in a upper middle class area. Mm-hmm. So we'd get good shit there. Cool. And then we'd get back home in time for like our apartment or our streets or whatever that we lived on. So we got to go three different times in the same day and take as much advantage of it as possible. It was awesome. Very cool. Yep, that's, I mean, we, we had the, you know, our neighborhood that we'd go to, and then we had the rich neighborhood that we'd go to, and, you know, it, it was, that's just what you did. You mm-hmm. went where the candy was. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they did that. Back when I was a kid, the malls did the things. They did, where kids would go to the did different stores the and get the did candy. Yeah, we did that back when I was a kid. I did it once. I thought it was lame. It was lame, but, you know, then you get to shoplift and stuff, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that candy. I do that anyway. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's totally it doesn't do that. Everybody does that. <laughs> People do it here all the time. All they the take time. cigars. Yeah. Take money out of the jar. Assholes. I know. Dicks. We had so, a, we yeah, had a so fan far. come in today. We did? We had a fan. Sweet. And uh, he'd heard, heard about the show, and, or he'd been listening to the show for several months. Told a cool story. He said that he wanted to get into cigar podcasts, so he downloaded or subscribed to like 12 different ones on mm-hmm. iTunes. Yeah. And ours is the show, only one he still listens to. So that's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. That's way cool. So... Special shout out to Tom Jackson. You got some good taste, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. Oh so. man. So yeah, Halloween was the was the big thing this last week. That was that took over most of the week. You okay. know. Other than that, it was just work and the rest of it's BS. But I smoked a lot of stuff. Did so you? I smoked. I didn't um, smoke much at all this week. More. Uh, I still had those um, the Tetuaje, um little monsters mm-hmm. to smoke through. So I smoked a couple more of those. I smoked cool. the. Uh, Little Drac, which is the Dracula one, mm-hmm. and eh, it was okay. Yeah. It wasn't great. I mm-hmm. liked the the little Frank better. The little mom was better, and uh, the little Wolfie. Mm-hmm. Those were all good. And we've got the uh, the Tetuahe, uh baby face, which is the the one that's modeled after Leatherface, which we're going to smoke on the next episode. Yes. So keep on listening. So that was a hint. <laughs> that was a hint for next week. Tetuahe. So if you have yes. a Tetuahe baby face, you happen smoke to have one. Smoke it with us. Uh, we've got the these ones that I have are a year old, so um, it's got some time on it. So mm-hmm. we'll see what they smoke like. And uh, I haven't smoked one of those. That's the only one out of the box that I have not smoked. And I had two of them because they come with ten. Mm-hmm. So I figured that way we get to smoke them together and see what we think. So, so that's speaking, cool. what do you think? What do you think? Um, it's good. It's um not as uh, it's not as spicy, but it has a lot of flavor. Yeah, it really it does, does have a lot of flavor. And there are times where it gets really smoking good. I mean, I showed it up a little earlier, and I had smoke just pouring out of this thing. But uh, it's certainly better than last week's, because last week's I could not get a draw out of it at all. Which one was last week's? The one I had last week. Oh, the one you had last yeah. week. Okay, I thought Before, you meant like the, the reason why cigar. I, we... Yeah, the reason why I dry boxed it was because of how wet that one was. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes they come out that way. They, they're, you know, they're trying to get in the market and mm-hmm. trying to get them out there to the, to the B&Ms for them to sample, see if they want to carry the product. So, yeah. you know. It may be that the rep may hold them a little, uh, you know, wetter because he wants to make sure that they're going to be not dry when they get out to the yeah. B&M. So, yeah. you know, that's what you do. You just got to, and you can do the, you know, the finger test and squeeze it a little bit and see if uh, if it's wet or spongy, then you know you have to dry box it. And, mm-hmm. um, and my burn's really good. Yeah, my burn's real, the burn's really even. Uh, this does feel a little spongy still. I don't know if it's, if it yeah. feels maybe well, a little. I think the heat loosened it up because before little, it didn't feel spongy. feels like it's a little light, like there's a little voids in it but i'm not sure if that's just spongy but it's smoking good so hey yeah so it's but, better um, than you were expecting i'm guessing because yeah not, i mean i haven't had a romeo for this yeah no i haven't had a romeo and a uh, romeo y julieta in a long time that mm-hmm. wasn't a uh, cuban mm-hmm. and those are really good um so yeah this is this is tasty though i mean what is this retail for do you know uh i think they're eight eight fifty yeah it's not bad nowadays you're not gonna get a soda dollar under eight eight fifty anymore cool band. especially with the uh Stupid, what's that thing called? The, that shit. The S they, chip. S chip. There you go, which stands for sucks or shit. <laughs> it was funny. We 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 made a political statement here when that law came into effect, 
because any of the cigars before the certain date we kept at the regular price because we'd already paid tax on that okay so any new stuff that came in after that that had this new tax on it we put a blue sticker on the box that said s chip on it so that if people asked what is this chip we could tell them get them all pissed off and nah, i remember yeah. seeing those yeah. stickers on we there. still have some boxes that still have them on there but yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah some people would ask like are you serious and if, for those who don't know ed added a dollar to every stick and it goes Which to sucks. children's health care children don't smoke cigars why do they have to why would they benefit from Yeah, it should stuff? go to my health care. It should go, yeah. Old they should guy be taxing healthcare. Happy Meals. Yeah, tax Happy Meals, tax um, bullshit that kids need stuff. Soda and candy and stuff There you like go, that. yeah, stuff that's really, you know, that's stuff gonna, that's... Uh, that's going to affect children's health. Exactly, later down the road. Not freaking cigars. Dicks. Bastards. These are, these are things that adults enjoy. It's uh, an adult luxury, mm-hmm. and um, we already pay enough syntax with the booze and stuff, so... Fucking government speaking of which this is nice it's not as uh, citrusy as a no it's very this is very beers. it's very weedy it's got yeah. a lot of wheat flavor to it it's a lot of weedy beers have that citrusy like yeah blue moon little little something. malty too a malty little yeah. weedy but it's tasty it's i don't nice. know that it initially pairs really well with it's this a, but it's a little milder than this mm. Mm. it's nice though all right, so cigar. this is a toro so we're not going to really probably get through this whole thing but we're at about the uh, 16 minute mark so we're going to take a little break and when we get back, we'll go into the second third of the Romeo y Julieta RYJ. RYJ. And that's the Bon Carreras Creature Feature. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, we're back for the second third of the Romeo y Julieta RYJ. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is a tasty little bugger. It's, it's got sad. some. Uh, it's got some complexity to it, it's changing a little bit. Uh, it hasn't changed on me yet, but um, it, it is uh, definitely spicy with a little bit of that. It's got it's a Nicaraguan. I mean, it's a yeah. It doesn't taste like a Romeo at all. No, when you when I you think know. about you know the the Dominican stuff, um, typically you're going to get a pretty mild cigar. Yeah, I think um, compared to Nicaraguans, Nicaraguans you get a lot of spice and that cocoa flavor, and uh, this is more of a leathery uh, spice. I'm not really getting very much cocoa I did yet. It, I did it around the- front part of my tongue again that's, yep. that's where the spice is for me and on the retro hell there's a there's some nice burn but uh have you retro there you go yeah ah <laughs> yeah it's a little burny on the retro hell. yeah but um yeah that's tasty i mean um yeah it's smoke it again that's tasty so far mm-hmm. so um it is time for the esteban carreras creature feature sponsored by esteban carreras and the chupacabra <laughs> So they say exists now. Or they whatever. do. They're saying that. <laughs> All right. So hold on for the Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. All right. This week's Creature Feature is a documentary. Another, classic. another Of another classic. Documentary of a bunch of classics, actually. Yeah. yeah. And um, we wanted to go a little different this time. Um, I actually found a documentary on Friday the 13th called Crystal Lake Memories. And it's a long ass documentary. Yeah, but <laughs> you know what? I flew through it. I mean, it, it is. Was, it, it is was literally, uh, I'd say, six and a half, seven yeah, hours. I think it's about six and a half, possibly. And it covers front to end. It's twenty all to the Friday forty minutes yeah. on every one of the Friday the 13th. And it's hosted by Corey Feldman, which you know, that's he was, he was one of the guys, form. one of the guys that killed Jason, one of the definitive it's the guys first that one killed to Jason. Really killed him. But. Yep. And uh, it's a it's a cool documentary. If you're, if you're any kind of fan of the Friday the 13th movies, it's a great way to get a lot of insight mm-hmm. into the series and what their thought processes was. Oh, thought yeah. processes? Plural. Something like that. Yeah. Of making the series. What did you think? I uh, thought it was great. Uh, found it interesting. Now, we're going to talk as though people know these movies, so if you do... Right, yeah, spoiler you, alert. These yeah. movies are fucking old, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think but, it's interesting that Sean Cunningham, the uh, director... Uh, basically the creator of the whole thing mm-hmm. uh, you know Mrs. Voorhees is actually the killer in this movie there is, Jason has mentioned he's died years ago in a camp drowning because he was the outcast of the camp Yep. and the reason why she attacks counselors who are having sex is because the counselors were having sex when Jason was drowning and it's interesting because he left after that first movie you know the movie's a smash and everything the director did it yeah, creator director, director yeah and uh, he went on to do other things and then Jason comes along, and it goes on for several years. And after number eight, he comes back, and he wanted to get rid of Jason. Because he <laughs> never wanted Jason to begin with. was never supposed to be about Jason. But he realized he couldn't. Yep. And, yeah. But uh, I stuck with the series the whole time. I've seen, matter of fact, 
uh, 8, 9, and 10 I actually saw in the theater. So, I mean, I was still going to see them 8, 9, and 10. But I loved it. The first one scared the crap out of me. It was matter of fact, we went to see that and My Bloody Valentine at a drive-in. Mm-hmm. That's when I first saw Friday the 13th. And uh, Scary Night, those were both good scary movies. Yep. But the scene at the end when Jason jumps out of the boat is a mm. scare, jump out of your seat, freak out moment. Yep. And they, they kind of m- uh, mimicked the ending of Carrie and they admitted it, that they kind of ended. Yeah, know, that was one of the things that I thought was really cool about the documentary is they talked about basically what they wanted to make was a scary movie for very little money. Um, very few people got paid anything right. on it. I yeah. mean, the actors are getting basically 700 bucks a week to be on it yeah. with a promise of one week's work. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And they filmed it in, I think, four or some shit like right. that. It was really, really quickly filmed. Well, they wanted and, to capitalize uh, on the success of of Halloween. Yeah, and uh, and but they basically stole from a lot of different things. Yeah. Like they Even as far as when they were doing the soundtrack, he said, I want kind of a psycho kind of a sound. So they've got mm-hmm. some of those little elements of the psycho right. soundtrack in there. Right. And... Uh, you know, he took a lot of things from pieces here, pieces there, and just kind of, it was an amalgam of a bunch of different horror genres and mm-hmm. horror movies yeah. that became this thing that just blew up. And and, and I uh, think it's funny that Sean Cunningham, when he was pitching it to the to the money people, he mm-hmm. actually said, I want to rip off Halloween. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of what he said. Yeah, and, I, and it, this is what killed me. I loved this moment in the documentary. He talks about how he kind of came up with the money to make this movie. He put an ad in a trade magazine, yep. and all it had was a picture of Friday the 13th, and no script. A, not no, they anything. had no script. They had nothing. You just had a name. It's like it's an unlucky day. I think it'd be a good name for a horror flick. I don't know what the hell it's going to be about, but here it is, Friday the Thirteenth. And it was like uh, it'll scare the crap out of you. Yeah, something. something like it was a stupid ass tagline. It's like mm-hmm. the most unlucky day for death or something. Yeah. And then um, people start throwing money at him to make this thing. And then they had to, well, shit. I guess we got to come up with a script. Now we write you know? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that, you know, I long for those days in Hollywood. You can't do that anymore. And that was now, just. A, and it was so. Uh, Obviously, it was a slasher movie, the first one, but it was also a murder mystery. It was, it was a whodunit, like, yeah. Like, yeah, who, who's doing the killing, you know? And they kept planting red herrings here and there. As to, it could be this guy, it could be the her. Yep, and that uh, was what was different about it. At the time, it was a you know a little different because it was a, a whodunit um, slasher flick mm-hmm. with a twist. And yeah. uh, they kind of threw that on the wayside until, I think, what, part five when they yeah. brought back the twist thing? And it was not no, really it was a, a terrible Jason. Twist. That was yeah, a... it was just that there was a, it was a fake Jason there. Everybody yeah. was all pissed off that it wasn't really Jason yeah. doing the killing. So, Which they kind of gave it away because it was a different mask. I mean, it was a hockey mask. But one had blue on it, one had red. And, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. I forgot, you know, you think about some of the, the people who whose career started basically from Kevin Bacon. Yep, Kevin Bacon uh, was in the first there, one. There were several of them, too, that I was... Corey Feldman was another Corey one. Feldman, yeah. Yeah, Corey uh, Feldman did number four. He was a kid when he did number four. Uh-huh. And uh, by the time they wanted him to come back for five, he was already working with Spielberg with Goonies, and uh, yeah. he had done uh, Gremlins. Right. So he had Gremlins and Friday the 13th in the same summer, and that shot his uh, his popularity up, yeah. and that's what allowed yeah. him to do Goonies with uh, Spielberg. So. Yeah, and then followed yeah. that up with Lost Boys. And he had a nice little run there of, of horror movies, actually. Yep. Uh, Tony Goldwyn. Yeah, Tony Goldwyn. He was uh, one of the people, and I love that they showed he was one of the people who didn't want to admit that he did it. They, yeah. got, they had a little segment like you know, some people didn't run it really want to, they don't want to admit that they did it or they kind of don't put it on the resume and they showed right. a picture of him on there. I guess because he's one of the guys who's like, <laughs> that wasn't me, uh, that wasn't me. But uh, you know, the progression of the of the movie, you know, Jason comes along in, in uh, episode or the sec- Friday Thirteenth Part Two, and he wears a hay sack, and that was a. Uh, ripped and, from uh, a, uh, the, town the town of the dreaded sundown, sundown which yeah. is a great another great scary movie and i never really made that connection until i was watching it and before they even said it i was like that's the town that dreaded sundown i never paid attention to that then they mentioned it yeah that was kind of an homage to that yep and it wasn't till three that the hockey mask comes into into play yep i loved one two was okay you got a lot of boobs in two so that thumbs up there uh, was two the one that was directed by the porn dude? No, I think that was five. Five? Yeah. Or four? One of those two. Uh, three was my favorite of the fun. I, 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 the first one was classic, Who Done It? I think from that point on, it became more fun. It was like more about you were kind of pulling for Jason as opposed to what you should be doing. Yeah. Uh, three, I loved. Three's probably oh, three was. Favorite. Dude, I saw three in the theater like twice because of the 3D mm-hmm. was just out of this world it was crazy good and yeah, um, it, it was a blast it had some scares in it it was yeah. just uh, just the eyeball coming out at you it was like yeah, what that's awesome that, that spear coming cool. right yeah that was, badass, that was badass yeah and uh, that was like the first time they had used 3D 
in what 40 years or yeah something? it had been a long time they, a long they put time. a lot of, and what's funny is they did it on such a budget that it didn't really even cost, they had to retrofit the theaters and that's what mm-hmm. cost more money than almost making the movie mm-hmm. but then after that it was like Jaws 3D and uh, Amityville 3D and mm-hmm. everybody started putting out these schlocky 3D movies and that went away pretty quickly and <laughs> it did. I'm just now coming back I'm waiting for it to go away now yeah, please stop exactly. with the 3D yeah because you saw Super or Man of Steel in 3D right god my eyes were bleeding for a day after that movie it was horrible <laughs> Uh, four is great. I think four is really good. That's one of Corey Feldman. Yeah, four is awesome. That's and, uh, one of my favorite. I go, I go one and then four for me. And then, uh, no, uh, one and one and one, three, three and four. four. Three for, because it was fun with the three D. But you watch mm-hmm. it now without the three D, and you're like, eh, it's yeah, not it's as cool. cool. Right. So I liked four a lot. Uh, I hated five. I think the most underrated one, and I thought this going into watching the documentary, mm-hmm. and they even say the same thing. I think six is very underrated. Six should have uh, Friday the thirteenth. No, that was five. <laughs> that was no, that five. Was, no, that was seven. That was that the was one seven. with the telekinetics and everything. Oh, I thought that was the that was six. Uh, now six is the one where they stuck the. Oh, that was seven. Thing. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. And the lightning bolt. They said they want to make it like Frankenstein and we'll bring him back to life. So they did the lightning bolt and Horseshack from. Uh, yeah, I like that one. That was a good car. one. Yeah, it had yeah. the guy from uh, uh, um, Last American Virgin there too, didn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. it did. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. And uh, the chicken there was hot, and she's aged very well. Yeah, she has. Six. She, and I like her upset. That was her last movie. She didn't I really, do anything I, after that. One of the things they brought up in the documentary that I thought was a really cool idea was bringing back all the survivors. That would have been awesome. That would have been a cool idea. And I don't, you know, they could still do that. I yeah. mean, there's still survivors out there. Bring them back for like a, you know, they, they were all, they, re, they realized they were all connected and they mm-hmm. met up and went to some therapy and they basically, they're, you know, have their therapist bring yeah. them out to Crystal Lake one more time and then fucking Jason's, Jason's like, like, like oh, yeah. and they have to fight them. That'd be awesome. That would be bad. Badass. But see, the, I didn't realize they were pitching Freddy versus Jason almost from the beginning of Nightmare on Elm Street. Yep. Uh, and it took forever coming to being. Sean Cunningham actually had to get back involved to make that happen. Yep. But uh, seven was solid. Eight was stupid. That was Jason Takes Manhattan. Did not like that one. Oh, he takes Manhattan. He's in Manhattan for like ten minutes because they couldn't afford to film in Manhattan. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> it's mostly on the boat. Uh, like the director's like, we're gonna have him in Manhattan. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, we're gonna have him in Manhattan. Twenty five, eighty percent of the time. Twenty five percent of the time, it's gonna be like this minute, <laughs> this many minutes. <laughs> then they filmed it in freaking Vancouver or some shit. Yeah. So, I think they filmed there for like a day. They got, they got like a day and a half in New yeah. York to actually film. That's awesome. And uh, that's Hollywood. Uh, nine was terrible. That was when Jason goes to hell. That was where Sean Cunningham comes back, and he's like, "Get rid of Jason." Yeah, that was. And crap. that was where Jason's spirit can be transferred to each person. Yeah, uh, see, now I with, with the I, once the Nightmare series came up, I kind of shifted mm-hmm. um, lines, and I was more of a Nightmare guy than a Friday guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I was watching that documentary, I started realizing, like, wow, the last one I really saw was probably four. But I wow. re- after watching the documentary, I started going, okay, well, no, I've seen him, but I don't remember liking him all that much. Back. So I remember, you know, liking a few of them. Yeah. And I never saw Manhattan. I never saw it all the way through. I just never did. Uh, uh, the one after that, the Jason Goes to Hell thing, I started watching it and I was like, this is garbage. I just didn't even watch it. Uh, X or 10, I've never seen. The uh, space one. Well, that, that one's kind of fun, too. That one has some moments. They what'd say that. What would you think of that one death where the head was frozen and smashed? That was it? awesome. Yeah, that looked fucking cool. <laughs> that was really cool. That was it. They freeze her face in a, was it a cryogenic, a cryogenic kind of something thing. and yeah. smashes it and it just like, that was cool. That was a funny death. Yeah. Uh, and I know, met I met Kane Hodder at the uh, at the the thing at the uh, Comic Con. Yeah, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, Kane Hodder played him. See, I, I was blown away. I thought he'd been in earlier ones. Yeah, he didn't come around till six. Yep. I think he did six through nine. Yep, maybe ten. No, he didn't. No, yeah, he did ten. He was ten. Yeah, he was ten. He did ten, but he didn't get Jason. He didn't get Freddy versus Jason. He didn't get Freddy versus Jason. That's right. They brought in the tragedy, new dude because he yeah. deserved it. He'd been he'd stuck through the franchises during their. You know, most lean days because they started. You know, when they first came out, they were doing 30, 40, 35, 40 million dollars a picture, mm-hmm. and then it started dropping into the low thirties and then the mid twenties. And the last three or four were eighteen. Yeah, yeah. But, but they're they, still filming them on like a two all, million dollar budget. So they all still made money yeah, though. So yeah. it worked. That's the whole thing. They still made money. And so I, uh, I, I like horror anyway, so I was going to watch Nightmare on the Street and still pull for Jason and Michael. I mean, those, I'm still Jason and Michael, guys. I like horrors, too. But uh, <laughs> but uh, we were discussing. I liked the first Nightmare. I thought the second one was crap. Third, the second one's awful. Yeah. Third one was pretty good. But my favorite was the new Nightmare. I thought that was awesome. That was neat. It was and a different different take on it. So after 10, or X, Jason X, Freddy vs. Jason comes out. Mm-hmm. I saw that one. Yeah. I thought that was a lot of fun. I had I, a lot of fun. With I thought I hadn't seen it, and then when I saw the documentary parts of it, I'm like, okay, yeah, I saw that. I remember yeah, that. It was and, a good uh, 
And then the remake. You know, I was pissed off about the Halloween remake. I thought this Friday 13th remake I thought remake the Friday 13th remake good. was actually decent. Yeah, but, it was um, very good. I, I, liked, I thought that they went the right direction with it. Um, had a lot of good nudity in it and great kills and stuff. And I, I dug it. Um, you know, Kane Hodder probably should have come back, but yeah. oh well. There's a um, chick in that movie, Juliana Gill. Oh my God. Got the greatest boobs. Oh my ever. God. Greatest everything. She's got an extended nude scene where she's riding this dude like a freaking pony. And, and I know it's an ad lib. I know it's an ad lib because he goes, God, your boobs are perfect. <laughs> no, that was an ad lib. <laughs> no, dude, they said it in the documentary that the director, he was in the script. He's like, I don't know if I want to say that, dude. He's like, no, I'll say it. He'll get laughed. And he said it and then they got a laugh. But they said, oh, and they had, I don't know if you heard that in the documentary. The guy was like, yeah, that was a 12 hour day filming that that scene and uh-huh. he's like and you're thinking oh poor guy 12 hour day he's like but you wear a cock sock that long it's not comfortable because <laughs> they put those little things on him where yeah. it covers their junk right but you gotta know I'm he's still gonna get on him, watching her boob spouts for 12 oh, hours I'd be 12 happy. hours are you kidding me that's a dream and a half right there she was hot <laughs> she, she was is hot. very hot and matter of fact that movie's weird because it it's on for 40 minutes before the credits ever start rolling I remember sitting in the theater because uh, Mike Madonna's wife at the time was in the movie Willa Ford mm-hmm. was in it and I wanted to see if she was going to put Willa Ford Madonna or if she was just going to stick. And all of a sudden, I'm like, did, did they show that? I never showed the credits. And like five people die. They've already seen, we've already seen three or four people naked. And all of a sudden, the credits roll. What the fuck is that all about? Yep. In the remake. That's weird. But of the four chicks that get naked in the remake, Mike Madonna's wife had the fourth best boobs. So that shows there's some good boobs in the in the remake. Yeah, there's some good boobs in that. Yeah. If you get, yeah, if you get a chance to watch Crystal Lake Memories, set aside a time, maybe a day where it's rainy and you can't do anything outside, or it's cold and snowing, it's a it's a good watch. It's a good watch, yeah. Especially really if you're is. a fan of the movies. Even if you're not a fan of the movies and you just want to watch something very interesting. Or like how movies get made. Yeah. That's a very good. A lot example. of good info, a lot of mm-hmm. great, um, inter- interesting things about how they have to deal with the producers. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's what killed me about that whole series. Like, they, they made that series for so little money, mm-hmm. and yet the producers are still like, still oh, you can't do this, it. you can't yeah. do that, you yeah. can't. And it was just killing me. All the, all, I really want to see an uncut version of that one that they were talking about that was the bloodiest yeah. one. Yeah. But, but they, that they, was seven, and one where they just. He actually said the MPAA raped his movie. Yep, and uh, the fact that they they trashed all the footage. It's like there was actually a, a ledger that said all the no good footage, trash it. So yep. that footage is gone. All I you have left do. is like video of it, and it looks like horrible garbage. It's yeah. like all lines running through it and shit. It's horrible. You know, you're making a movie that's going to be R-rated and everything, and you know the MPAA is going to fuck with you. So keep your keep your stuff. You know, hide well, it. Don't yeah. let anyone. I mean, oh, nowadays, wow. that's a big deal. Nowadays, there's the uh, unrated director's cuts of everything because yeah, they know DVDs that they're going to... put all that stuff You know, there. nowadays, instead of making it R, they'll make it PG-13 at the theater and then mm-hmm. release the unrated one on, on DVD and Blu-ray um, just so they can make more money. Didn't they say they money. did that with one of the, uh, the Friday 13th? I thought they did that with one. Yeah. They made two one. different versions so that they... Yep, so they could have the... Uh, I think that was the Goes to Hell or... Yeah, it might or have been. X or something. I don't know. One of those two. Yeah. Well, Jason Goes to Hell can go to hell. That, <laughs> the movie's terrible. I was pissed. Yeah, that was the one with the 3D stuff, too, wasn't it? It had some 3D. At the end or whatever, yeah. like the last 10 minutes. Well, it sure. also had the foreshadowing of the Freddy versus Jason because Jason's mask is on its pile of sand. And, and then, then the Freddy's floor. hand comes out of hell. Which Kane Hodder was, was the hand the of Freddy. So yep. he technically played Jason and Freddy. Yep. How cool is that? That is cool. Who can say that? Oh, now, they talked a little bit about the TV series, too, which I don't remember ever seeing the TV series. I remember Did you watch being it? out, but I never watched it. And yep. if I had known, it sounds pretty good. It sounds like almost Twilight zone Yeah, but it's almost like it's like X-Files Twilight Zone because it has yeah. the same characters running through yeah, it. Yeah, it does. You know, they're basically... Um, each story was like each item in this antique shop was cursed, uh, and it would do something good for you if you acquired it, but it but also then, would then turn on you. Yeah, so they would be investigating the curses. Yeah, so. now I'm wishing I had watched it. I think you could probably get it. I'm sure, it's available. I don't want to watch it now because it's probably no. You're gonna different. fucking watch it. <laughs> you're a fan. You watch it. And they were talking about how people got pissed that the uh, Friday Thirteenth movie people were pissed that they were doing this TV series. They felt like they were being uh, what's the word manipulated or conned into trying to watch this thing. But yeah, because well, I mean, you, you watched it thinking it was gonna be Jason TV series, yeah. and Jason's not in the TV well, I think series. The TV at all, series so. probably made more sense to call it Friday the Thirteenth than it did. The, yeah, the movies. True. Yeah. Now I, they did say one thing, and I don't think this is right. They said that all the movies were continuous for the first four. The flavor all happened within four days of, of each other. Mm, I don't remember them that saying didn't that. Ha- that's no way. They never covered that in the timeline. 
I don't think so. Apparently, Friday the 13th 13th 2 takes place immediately after 1. Okay. And then 3 takes place immediately after 2. And then 4. And it's like, they never established that in the timeline. Yeah. Because they were making fun of them. Like, oh, you could tell it wasn't four straight days. When did they ever say it was four straight days? Well, not only that, but the freaking camp changed. Like, they kept filming at different places, and the camp looks completely different. Now, speaking of 4, the chick that played uh, Corey Feldman's sister. Mm Mm-hmm. Holy crap. Tall, striking, blonde. I remember falling in love with her at the first time to see it. Yep. And I was so, I've gone to look and see if she's been naked in a movie. Has and she? there's one movie you can see one boob. One it is boob. A nice, it is a nice boob. Nice. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, Friday 13th, tons of nudity. Thumbs up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they show the nudity in the documentary so you get to see boobs they do really yeah they had they were, when they talked about one of the directors that they um that's uh, that was that cracked me up that they they would bring in these different directors for each movie and they had one director that they went to this guy who did basically softcore porn because they're uh, like well he can handle the boobs and the everything and you know that's kind of like what we're doing it's like you know basically violence porn so mm-hmm. why not let him do it and um it wound up being kind of a bad one from what yeah. i understand yeah that was the one with the fake jason no was it yeah I'm trying to be all yeah. murder mystery again yeah. and uh there's someone else. Oh, and six. John Travolta's nephew was in that. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. There was somebody. Uh, Crispin Bing Glover. Cros- Bing Crosby. Yep. Bing Crosby's son was in yep. one of the movies. And uh, yeah, what's his name? Crispin Glover was yeah. in one of them. He and was they, in one. They talked about know. him being weird on the set, which he's a weird guy. <laughs> he so is a weird guy. Big surprise there. And uh, Kane Hodder, I don't know if you know this, is now in a new series. Oh, yeah? Horror movies. Oh, and he's Hatchet. He, yeah, he's Hatchet, yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. Great. The for first him. hatch, the first hatch, I like. The second, just it's all about gore now. It's not even story. Yeah, I like the first hatch. It was actually really funny too. <laughs> it was. All right. So if you get a chance, if you can find it, um, I don't know if it's on a Blu-ray or something like that or whatever, but check out the uh, Crystal Lake Memories. It's a long-ass documentary about Friday the Thirteenth, but highly entertaining. Very so entertaining. That ends today's creature feature. Esteban Carrera cigars, super premium cigars at a great price. They're scary good. So what do you think of the uh, RYJ? It's tasty. It's, it seemed peppery or last week when it Maybe was Maybe the dry boxing yeah. took, some, took some of that but away. But it still has a lot of flavor. It does taste like a Nicaraguan. It does yeah. not taste like a Romeo y Julieta. Uh, I think it's an interesting stick. I think I might want to try one in another couple of weeks. You know what it actually reminds me of? And this okay. is kind of weird because that's not a Nicaraguan stick. Mm-hmm. Is It reminds me a little bit of the... Uh, Drew Estate, my Uzi weighs a ton, which oh, is it? actually a Dominica. So, go figure. Is it? That's yeah. Interesting. To me. Okay. I've yeah. only had the one. Well, I have a, I've had the little one. The bait fish, yeah. And then you gave me another actual Uzi. Yeah. So, that's kind of what it reminds me of. It's okay. the same so. kind of profile range, a spicy. It kind of reminds me of the Oida Nicaragua Celebration. It's about that strength level. Uh, about yeah, I that, can see that. About that taste level. I oh, which I like that, that cigar. I mean, I've moved past it as far as palate goes. I like the Dark Corojo better, the Antonio 70 yeah, uh, a lot better. But uh, Celebration is a nice stick, and I think comparing this to that is a compliment to this stick. Yeah, it's definitely uh, one of the better Romeo Julietas I've had in a long time, that's mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. All right, so we're at about the 38-minute uh, mark, so we're going to take another break here. We'll be right back for the last third of the shout RYJ, outs. and we'll do some shout-outs. Yep. All righty, we are back for the last third of the RYJ, mm-hmm. a Nicaraguan Puro. Nicaraguan? Did yep. I say that right? Yep. It's not like I said something else. With the proprietary Nicaraguan Jalapa wrapper. You will only get this wrapper on this cigar. So give it a try because it's something unique, yo's. Homeboy. That's right. Home slice. Home slice. I'm gonna age myself there. All right, so we got some shout outs. Yes, we do. A lot of them. Yep. And the ladies are showing up. We're getting some, uh, we some chicks. Digging the show. excellent. Okay, from Facebook, we've got Zane Gamble. He's a Zane's, long-time, long-time listener. Yep, I have, you, Zane, Zane is uh, one of my buddies from uh, Cigar Asylum and Cigar Aficionado, so I've known Zane for a long time. Thanks for listening, Zane. I have a feeling you're going to know this person. Eileen Dennis Luna. That is my mother. That is your mother, okay. Mm-hmm. She, mom! Uh, she liked us on Facebook. I love you, Mom. <laughs> Ricky Paniagua, of course. Our buddy. And uh, Jeff Hershauer. Our buddy. Yep. Okay, Twitter. Lots of Twitter. Lots yep. of Twitter stuff. I got some twats, too. Dennis. <laughs> There's a guy on our local radio station, and he did not 
it's just flow of language. He did not mean this. He said, I received a tweet. A tweet? Is that a tweet or a twat? And we're like, <laughs> they played it on the radio. It's unbelievable. Anyway, we just talked about your mom, and then we segued into twat. That's not yeah, good. <laughs> right. That's we're, sorry, s- Eileen Dennis Luna. I'm going to smack the shit out of you right now. <laughs> you right, did. Yeah, I know, I know. Go ahead. <laughs> Dennis Mathis, also known as at Stogie Daddy. Uh, cigar Review, at Cigar Review. Uh, Francine Cunder, a lady. Or an oddly named man. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Carolina Glenn Roths. Of the Glen Roth's Scotch. Nice. Uh, distillery. Thank we would you. love to have some. She was way, following us. before. I'm now following her, but she followed us first. Uh, Mrs. Cigar of Orlando. Excellent. RJ Cigar Company. So many, I have to flip the page. I got RJ Cigar Company, too. Did you? Okay. Donald Baker Jr., which is uh, at High Papa. Uh, a competitor. A local competitor. And Fuego Tobacco. Cool. They have several stores in the Dallas area. I say competitor. We're not close to either one of any of their stores, so we don't directly compete. Uh, but they're good folks over there. We appreciate the follow. Awesome Ash Knights. Lancero Arsonist. That's a clever name. That is cool. Lancero yeah. Arsonist. Arsonist nice. Scott Wilson. And just says Scott, Scott C. I don't remember if there's any other name after that. All I saw is Scott C. And then on YouTube, we've got Kirk with Poolside Cigar Reviews. Mm-hmm. Jeff Hotower's already been mentioned. Yep. And uh, so that's what I've got. We appreciate it. There was your shout-out. I've got uh, Raphael Nodell from Oliveros Cigars. Okay. Awesome. Oliveros, cool. if you don't know, also does the aging room the stuff. Boutique Blends also. Yep, yeah. Boutique Blends. Uh, CigarEvents.com is following us, so that's cool. Uh, Blind Man's Puff Aaron. Took you long enough, dude. What the hell? Well, you just uh, started following me. <laughs> I know. Well, you just barely started following me. <laughs> Rod Iglesias uh, from Iglesias. We uh, Part- from Partagas. He's from Partagas. He's a... Uh, yep. He was in the drawing, actually. Uh, we didn't know he was with the Robusto <laughs> Cigar Babe. Mm. <sighs> Thank you, ladies. Um, La Hoja? La Oja. La Oja. Sorry. I'll get Oha. it right eventually. Um, and um, Kalita, Kalita Hardman, okay. a lady. Kalita. Lady. Nice. Thank you, Kalita. Uh, Kalita. Hermosa Cigars. And uh, Chuck Duran. So those are my Twitter followers. We've got a couple of uh, new comments on the YouTube as well, yes, if I'm we not have. mistaken. Yes, we have. And I don't have them in front of me, so that'll be for next time. Next shout out. Next shout out yep. portion of the show, or of the next show. Yep. Oh, my burn got a little wonky. Well, I saw, little... I saw an interesting movie. It's not horror and it's not cigar related. Although I think, no. Yeah, there's a scene where several people are smoking cigars. The Way, Way Back. It's a little indie movie, came out this summer, got limited release, but did well for a limited release. Did like 17, 18 million bucks, and I think it was never on more than 500 screens. Has uh, one of my all-time faves, Steve Carell, playing totally against type. He is a dick in this movie. A major effing dick. Wow. Uh, He plays a stepdad, uh, Tony Collette. He's dating Tony Collette. Uh, oh, it's done by the same people that did Little Miss Sunshine, and Tony Collette and Steve Carell were both in Little Miss Sunshine. Uh, he's a stepdad, they're at a summer home, summer, you know, rental thing, and uh, he's cheating on her, uh, he he treats the kid like crap, there's a scene where he says, and it's in the trailer, so I'm not ruining anything, says to the kid, he goes, what do you think of yourself on a 1 to 10 scale, what, what do you think you are? First of all, who asks the kid that question? He says, uh, I don't know, six. Is now you're three. <laughs> That's oh, awful. God. <laughs> wow. So he gets a job at this uh, uh, amusement park that Sam Rockwell is running. Well, he doesn't run it. He he's a bum. He he owns the place. But he could care less. He just likes to walk around, flirt with chicks, and well, he kind of takes his kid under his wing. It's a very good coming of age story. I recommend it. Very good. And Steve Carell, I've said, and you mentioned it too. Yes, he's hilarious and he's a funny guy. He's a really good actor. I mean, he played this part. It didn't seem fake at all. It didn't seem like, oh, look, there's Steve Carell being a dick. He was a dick. And I predict an Academy Award nomination for him one day. All right. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. You seen anything special? Um, just that crystal. Well, well, yeah, a couple of things, but that was, we're talking about that on the next one. Yeah. I just caught up on some shows. My okay. Walking Dead, which I still can't believe you don't watch. And uh, I've got it. Boardwalk Empire. Watch. That's it. I wasn't really watching movies this week much. It was all about the Halloween, so... Oh, I watched Halloween. Yeah, that was the other Oh, okay. One. The yep. original. What's yeah. that? <laughs> it was okay. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> At its moments. 
Yeah. Eh, <laughs> not really scary. You know, we did say it was a classic last week. So I know, now, I know. Now <laughs> And then I've watched it actually twice. So I watched it <laughs> once really? for the show to wow. review it, and then I ended up watching it again. I got about halfway through it. I'm like, didn't I just watch this? I'm like, mm. God, I'm old. I forget shit already. Well, I watched part of. Uh... Shoot. Why did I just go back and watch part of it and stop? I was like, I just saw this. I don't remember. The internship? No, I did watch some of that. Just the 15 minutes in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> well, because no, there was one line that I couldn't remember what it was, and I went back and found it. And I was like, okay, that was it. But uh, yeah. Internship too. Watch the yeah, internship. watch much kid movies, but that's normal for mm-hmm. me. Um, we don't like kids on the show, so we don't talk about kid movies. No, nope, we don't. Kids suck. Hey, my kids are awesome. You suck. Everybody's kids are awesome to, to them. them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> now, you guys like me. My kids, my kids are kids. pretty cool. <laughs> you kids are really cool. And I'm not just saying that. Your kids are are you know your 14 year old <clears throat> is level headed and as smart as a 14 year old I've ever met. And your five-year-old's just... She kind of reminds nut. me of Toby. Cause she's always got something going. <laughs> <laughs> Toby's nuts, dog. She's always energetic. And she's nuts. Yeah, she's yeah. insane. <laughs> just literally insane. Yeah. Funny. But full of life. Yeah. For sure. So now you do have cool kids. And I'm sure all of you have very cool kids. No, you don't. Just me. All your kids <laughs> suck. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so did you do anything for Halloween? You just stayed home? I worked. It worked? Yeah, it worked. Did you guys get any trick-or-treaters? No. No. Nobody Actually, coming. Actually, no. Someone did come in and say trick or treat. That's right. Someone did. And you're like, trick, motherfucker. Said, uh, <laughs> yeah, buy a cigar. I'll let you smoke it. <laughs> you know? But, There's your treat. <laughs> There's your treat. Yep. Uh, Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? Damn it. Right here, motherfucker, smoking a cigar. How do you smoke a cigar and keep it lit and talk at the same time? I still haven't mastered that in 30 years. You, you, you keep puffing on it every I so was. Long. This one's still going. We still got a lot of that, though. I mean, look at that. That's um, we still got. We're still really on the second, third, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. But we'll be finishing this after the show, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. I, I just don't like to go long. I mean, I think an hour's long enough for a podcast. I know a lot of guys go two hours and stuff, but uh, yeah. Well, we uh, like to get in, get out. That's what she said. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, yep. So do you have any plans for anything fun in the next week or so? Thanksgiving crap. That's about it, really. Let's, well, I guess the time this airs, it might be after Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Thanksgiving, pretty yeah. close to, yeah. But no, nothing. Um, no, family. Well, we talked about doing it, a movie review, but we're not going to. I'm going to address this now, because the time this airs, we'll be very close to the 50-year anniversary of the day that John F. Kennedy was assassinated, not far from where we're at. Mm-hmm. True. What, 20 miles, maybe? Yeah, about. So, uh, have you done that Dealey Plaza tour? Have you done yeah. any of that stuff? Yeah, we did that before we actually... Well, right when we were moving here. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the one of the touristy things we did when we came and visited and found our apartment and stuff. So Now, I used to work right around the corner from Dealey Plaza in the school book depository. It's not called that anymore. Yeah. The Sixth Floor Museum, I think, is what it's called now. And uh, so I would walk over at lunch sometimes, and I'd do the free part. I've never done the paid tour, but they have, like, you know things set up that you can read and look at and it's kind of cool if you're ever in dallas it's something to, to stop and look at uh anyway there was a book coming out and i didn't get the title and i tried to find it on amazon so maybe it's a book that's going to be coming out and they haven't put it on there but it's about the nfl's decision to go ahead and play the games that weekend after the assassination okay and fortunately for the cowboys they were at home that weekend because if they'd have been in another city the Dallas Cowboys would have been blamed for this. Seriously, I mean, that's just what it's talking about. The tension, the, the fans around the country hated the Cowboys because they blamed the entire city of Dallas oh, wow. for the murder of the president, which is stupid. It was a dude from Russia that killed him. It wasn't, it wasn't even a Texan that killed the guy. But if the country you, was just very mad at Dallas. He was such that. a, he was such, yeah, right. He's such a, he was such a beloved figure that, uh, you even know, they he blamed the our- entire city. Even though he took our Cuban cigars away. <laughs> yeah. Made sure he got all his first. Yep. Yep. H. Upman, Petite Coronas. Go get them, folks. <laughs> so, so technically, he's breaking the law. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He bought them legally. Mm-hmm. But, then, but he... then they became contraband once he signed that thing. Yep. But then again, a Kennedy doing something illegal? What? That, that doesn't Who would have thunk? <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy doing something illegal and getting caught and paying for it. Now, that doesn't happen. No, no, no. Not at all. But... Uh, Anyway, this book uh, focuses on uh, 
like Tom Landry, his, the job he had to perform yeah. to keep his team focused, to let them feel safe and not feel like the, they had the wrath of the world on them. So it sounds like an interesting read. So I'm looking forward to this book coming out. And once I find out the name, I'll, I'll come on there and tell you guys what it is. Yeah, Kennedy's get away with murder, man. I mean, he could pretty much drive a car off a bridge and yeah, chip, kill uh, a woman and be fine. That? What was it? Chip, uh, <laughs> what? What's the place? Chip. Chip a chip a cup chick a uh, uh, lake lake titty conca. I don't <laughs> lake titty fuck. <laughs> lake titty fuck. There should be a lake titty fuck. <laughs> there should be. And there should be all kinds of a uh, ta ta fuck up. <laughs> yeah, lake titty fuck up. And but, uh, uh, there'll be all kinds of bike rallies there, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, Oh, darn, I lost my train. The train just went right out the... <laughs> that's because we started about talking about titty fucking. That's, what, that's yeah. what happens when, you, when you're when you a man. Chipa- what titty what fucks? the hell is the name of that actual Narrow. place? Or Thad Kennedy in the Chipa- thing. Chupacabra. Lake Chupacabra. Lake Chupacabra. No. Look Chup- it up. Chupacabra. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> you're killing me. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah. anyway. Yep. So this is, yeah, it's tasty. Um, we'll see what it gets like on the last third. Uh, maybe in the next one I'll mention if it turned south or if it was fine. I don't know. But so far, so good. It's tasty. It's dark. I, when it's in the store, I will not have a problem recommending it. I'll, I'll know whose flavor profile it'll fit, and, and I'll recommend it to them. So for the people who normally smoke the, uh, the Romeo and Juliet, or Romeo and Julieta, uh, mm-hmm. would you recommend it still? Or would that have to be for someone probably, that's a... Probably, probably too not. strong yeah. to them. Not that it's real strong, but it's it's too strong for a regular. I would say it's Romeo still medium, yeah, medium is. body, but it's got a lot of flavor. It say does. It's probably medium to full flavor. Yeah. It's better than you were anticipating, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. But I don't see it as complex. I'd say it's you know pretty. Um, it only changed a little bit. It never really did anything else after that. But it tasted pretty consistent. Yeah, it's tasty. Yeah, I dig it. All right. Anything else? Nope. All right. Well, go that, boobs. Go boobs, yeah. Go Lake Titty Fuck. <laughs> we need to open that. That needs to be yeah. an actual place where we can go. We need uh, to make the, take this syndicated so we get a lot of money. Just buy a lake. And call, and it, call it, it Lake Titty, Titty, Titty Fuck. There you go. An all nude yes. lake. <laughs> but you have to be good looking. There's got to be a bouncer at oh, the yeah. door. <laughs> like Studio 54. No. <laughs> right. You don't get to come in. 90% chicks. <laughs> now, ugly dudes can come in because they won't score with the chicks. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're married. Yeah, not me. No. I'll just videotape it all. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's videotaping me. And photograph. <laughs> and sell it on the web. Nope, but it's... Uh, <clears throat> fun what do you think about the beer? I like this beer. Revolver. Yeah, it's tasty. Nice taste. So he... So um, our buddy works there as a... Uh, he's like a... Kind vendor, of account manager. Uh, account yeah. rep. Yeah. Not really sales. He just takes care of the accounts. Mm-hmm. Like a customer service kind of thing. But congratulations again to Davis. Yeah, Davis, good job, man. And uh, he is going to continue working on his own beers. Mm-hmm. He does. He did do the Oktoberfest. He has not brought us any yet, but he did tell me he was going to bring us some soon. That's cool, man. That's definitely more up his alley than the other job he had. So, oh, yeah, he hated that job. Yeah, so good job, Davis. And because we're, of that, proud of this wonderful editing job, you guys didn't have to hear how badly he hated that job. <laughs> he rambled one night on a podcast, and we had to cut that out. Yeah, it was like 10 minutes of, fuck you, job. <laughs> so, yeah, I cut that out. Well, go Davis. <clears throat> Good job, Davis. So that's going to round out today's uh, podcast, and we'll uh, give you an update later on the rest of the RYJ. But so far, so good. We're at the second third, and it's tasty. Mm-hmm. Um, last Big, third of the long podcast. Smoke. This is a Very, long. Yeah, it's a Toro. So this yeah, you got to put some time in. Thirty minute smoke, easy. Yep, easy. Yeah. So um, as always, um, keep your feet in the pool, a drink your in your hand, mouth. and your, your foot dirt. in your mouth, and your. And what? Your What's that? <laughs> That was so funny. That was so funny. I watched, I went back and watched it like four times because that look at his face, he goes, fuck. <laughs> so we're talking about the uh, Pull Side Cigar Reviews. Yeah. Reviews, which you do need to watch. Yeah, Those go subscribe on YouTube. Ones, yeah. They're really good. And subscribe to us. Yes. Okay. So, oh, we didn't even see it. Okay. So some real big news. Um, we are now on iHeartRadio. How did we forget? That? Yeah, I know, right? That should have been like the lead iHeart in. iHeartRadio, us. iHeartRadio. So go to iHeartRadio. Look up Calypso Cigar Review. Subscribe. Heart us. Heart, yeah, heart us and put Playlist us on your playlist. Yep. Uh, we're also on Stitcher. So if you have the Stitcher app on your iPhone or Android, go to Stitcher. Look up Calypso Cigar Review and uh, add us there to your playlist. Uh, we're on iTunes where we'd love to have the subscription there mm-hmm. as well as the five-star review. Um, YouTube subscribe YouTube and like. YouTube subscribe comment. and like. Yes, comments as well. Always welcome. We'd love to have some subscribers on YouTube and on uh, iHeartRadio. 
and Stitcher. Facebook. And likes. iTunes. Facebook, yeah. Twitter. So all over the place. There's so many places you There's can no see reason us and listen you can't to find us somewhere. So please do. And if you do any of those things, you will get a shout out. Do it on iHeartRadio, even though we don't get to see your names on the, on the people that heart us. So we can't give you a shout out there. So that just gives you an excuse to fight, like us there and then do it somewhere else. Yep. And we're new there, so we'd like to have some followers there. It'd be great. And um, it's just a, a great, I mean, that is everywhere. iHeartRadio yeah, is just is. like a big deal. So The that's biggest a, station that's a in deal. town here is on iHeartRadio. And most of them are, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So definitely go, go, go on there and heart us and um, add us to your playlist. We'd love it. And uh, as always, it's been great smoking with you. Have a good one, Brandon. Have a good one, Randy.